All right, uh, we're going to look into um, blood stain pattern analysis, um, also known as BPA. So what can an investigator learn from the analysis of a blood spatter? They can learn the type and velocity of the weapon, the number of blows, um, whether the assailant was right or left-handed, uh, uh, the position and movements of the victim and the assailant during and after the attack, which wounds were inflicted first, uh, the types of injuries, how long ago the crime was committed, and whether death was immediate or delayed. These are some of the things that you can find out uh, by looking at the uh, analyzing the blood spatter. So um, how is blood evidence detected at a crime scene? One thing they can do is use a light source, um, which, which is great. one great way of doing thing because it doesn't mess up your crime scene. Investigators will, will first examine the crime scene to look for areas that may contain blood, they can use a high intensity light or uh, ultraviolet light, UV light, to help them find traces of blood as well as other bodily fluids that are not visible under normal lighting conditions. Um, there's also uh, many different kinds of blood reagent tests. Um, they're also called presumptive tests and they're used to detect blood at crime scenes based upon the properties of hemoglobin in the blood. Hemoglobin uh, is, uh, is basically the property in blood that carries the oxygen, it's a protein in the blood that carries the oxygen around for us um, so that all of our cells uh, get the oxygen that they need to survive. Um, further tests at the crime lab can also determine if it's human or not. So the first thing we have is phenolphthalein, um, and that's a chemical that is still utilized today, and it's usually referred to as the Kasselmeier test and produces a pink color when it reacts with hemoglobin. For this experiment, you will need to wear gloves and goggles. Open a sterile cotton swab. Retrieve a dried blood strip from the glass jar. Add a drop of distilled water to the cotton swab. Make sure that the swab is wet all the way around so that you can pick up a good sample. If necessary, add a second drop of water. Roll the moist swab lightly over the blood strip. Next, add a drop of ethyl alcohol to the swab. After adding the ethyl alcohol, add a drop of phenolphthalein to the swab. Lastly, Add a drop of hydrogen peroxide to the swab. Shown here is a positive test result. In a positive test result, the swab will turn pink. Shown here are positive and negative test results. The blood strip that we tested was a positive control. Since it contained hemoglobin, we expected it to turn pink when hydrogen peroxide was added. If we test another sample that does not contain hemoglobin, the swab should not turn pink. You must test positive and negative control samples before testing any unknown samples to ensure that your reagents are working properly and that you are following the test procedure correctly. All right, another example of a blood reagent uh, test uh, is hemostix. Uh, that's a strip that has been coated with um, tetramethylbenzidine, also known as TMB, and will produce a green or blue-green color with the presence of hemoglobin. Um, if it doesn't have hemoglobin, it will stay the control color, in this case, yellow. Uh, a third example is luminol. This chemical is used by crime scene investigators to locate traces of blood, even if it has been cleaned or removed. Investigators spray a luminol solution throughout the area under investigation and look for reactions with the iron present in blood, which causes a blue luminescence. By the way, hemoglobin is red uh, because of the iron uh, that is in it. Um, and so, uh, but, but when it reacts with luminol, it is gonna create this blue luminescence. Um, but 
one problem with this is that other substances also react and also have iron in them, such as metals, paints, cleaning products, and plant materials. Uh, and another problem is, is that the chemical reaction can destroy other evidence in the crime scene. This is not usually the first thing that they'll do to test for blood, um, but it is. we know that it, because it could hurt the crime scene, it might be a last thing to really check for the blood uh, at the end. A fourth example, uh, and this is similar, uh, fluorescine, uh, and, uh, sorry, fluorescein, uh, this chemical is also capable of detecting uh, latent or old blood, similar to luminol. It is ideal for fine stains or smears found throughout a crime scene. After the sub uh, solution has been sprayed onto the substance or area suspected to contain blood, a UV light and goggles are used to detect any illuminated areas which appear greenish white if blood is present. It may also react to many of the same things as luminol, uh, uh, copper, and bleach. Okay. And the fifth example is uh, leucocrystal violet, uh, or LCV, is one of the chemical processes um, that's used for blood enhancement. Um, basically, it makes things more visible. So if we have a footprint um, with some blood on it, um, we can use this leucocrystal violet, and it really stands out and really help us make some good pictures of things to be photographed and analyzed. Okay. So blood, blood stain pattern analysis terms. Uh, spatter are just basically blood stains create from application of force to the area where blood originated. So um, it, it's not necessarily something that blood is not just spilling out there. The, uh, the origin or source is the place from where the blood spatter came from or, or originated um, from like which person and which part of the body. Uh, the angle of impact, the angle at which a blood droplet strikes a surface. The parent drop, uh, the droplet from which a satellite uh, spatter originates. So like this is the parent drop here. Uh, satellite spatters, they're drops of blood that break off from the parent spatter when the, when the blood droplet hits the surface. So if, it, if this is the big drop, the parent drop that hits, sometimes we could have a piece like bounce off and then uh, get a satellite spatter over there. All right, and we can also have these spines. Uh, the pointed edges of a stain that radiate out from the spatter, um, they can help us determine the direction uh, which the blood traveled. Okay, so we can have some passive blood stains. This isn't really uh, spatter, but patterns create from the force of gravity, uh, drop, series of, of drops, of flow patterns, of blood pools, etc. Um, we can also have projected blood stains. You guys are going to have a little uh, exercise at the end of this lab. Uh, looking at a projected blood stain and being able to determine something from it. So the patterns that occur when a force is applied to the source of blood, um, we will usually have uh, a parent uh, drop and then see what happens in terms of the direction of where it goes here. And this includes low, medium, or high impact spatters, cast off arterial, arterial spurting, and expiratory, which is basically when you're breathing, um, uh, blood blown out of the no nose, mouth, or wound. So when someone expires, or not when they die, when they breathe out, uh, the blood can get blown out. Um, we can also have uh, transfer or contact blood stains from people, for example, people step in blood and go somewhere else. These patterns are created when a wet, bloody object comes in contact with a target surface, uh, and it may be used to identify an object or body, body part. Um, we can also have white patterns created from an object moving through a blood stain, um, and uh, while a swipe pattern is created from an object leaving a blood stain. Okay, uh, 